more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. In this quick video, I'm going to be talking about some of the best resources for studying for the surgery shelf, as well as what you can use while you're on the rotation. So I think for everything, you're going to need a few components. This goes for all shelves. You're going to need some type of question bank, some good textbooks, potentially some video lectures, and also some websites or physical resources. And we'll talk about each one of those shortly. So the first thing is question bank, and I think it's pretty standard when it comes to your shelf is that um, you're going to need some type of very high quality question bank. The one thing that's different about surgery, if many of you probably have heard already, but for those that don't know, the surgery shelf is pretty much a medicine shelf, but for surgical patients. So how you're going to study for this is really going to be, you have to know your medicine very well. They're not going to be asking you about different types of procedures. They're not going to ask you about anatomy. They're not going to be asking about any of that. They're going to be asking you really just medicine questions. How do you manage these medical complications, for example, complications that happen in any patient, but they happen to be in a surgical patient. So post-op complications, pre-op complications, just things in general to make you think about different medical problems. That's really what the surgery shelf is testing you. So you don't need to know anything about the surgery itself. You don't need to know how a Whipple is performed. You don't need to know how any of these procedures are performed or what is the anatomy to get from uh, one position to another or what will you kind of interact with. You may get a few of those, but they're going to be more, I would say, more obvious anatomy questions or more obvious surgical questions that you may be asked. But really, the best way for this is going to be to do all the UWorld medicine shelf questions. And it may sound odd that you're going to be doing all of the medicine shelf questions for your surgery shelf, but in reality, that's what's going to be the most beneficial. You also should do all the surgery shelf questions for UWorld, uh, but those are going to be primarily, if I recall correctly, those are going to be mainly trauma. A lot of the questions you deal with are going to be trauma and how to manage these trauma patients, but your actual shelf is not going to be all trauma. There's going to be some trauma on it, and you may kind of go into it thinking if you only did UWorld for surgery, you're going to think, oh, the entire test is going to be about trauma, but that's actually not the case. So that's why you need to know both do all the questions for surgery. I think there's a maybe only 200 questions for surgery on New World Step 2. And then you're also going to do all the medicine questions, or at least the majority of them. And I say that specifically of doing the questions that you can see being medically relevant. So definitely doing all the GI questions. I believe if I recall correctly, you can select different subsections and one of them could even be surgery. Uh, but you're going to want to do the ones that are going to be specific. You're going to be want to do the ones that are going to relate to surgical patients. So things like endocrine, or even rheumatology probably aren't going to be the most helpful or even renal aren't going to be that helpful for your surgery shelf. But if you have time, definitely do those because you can still figure out how you're going to manage fluids and, and definitely in, in certain sections within room and certain sections within endocrine, especially when you're dealing with the thyroid, those could be useful for the surgery shelf. But definitely pick it kind of going by yield. What is going to be the most highest yield based off of what type of patients are most commonly going to have these types of injuries? GI is going to be number one. You're going to want to do CARs. You want to do pulmonary. You're going to want to do um, a little bit of ID and also neuro, especially when you deal with these surgical patients as well and dealing with patients in the ICU. So a little bit long-winded on the, the U-Roll. Try to do as much as you can, but definitely use kind of your common sense of what, what's most going to be highest yield because not everybody's going to be able to finish 1600 questions uh, while they're doing their surgery so probably most will not be able to if you really have time mbmes but i don't think it's very necessary just because there's so many questions within you world for medicine and surgery people often say that this is going to be the hardest shelf but definitely if you know what's going to be on it primarily it's a medicine shelf with surgical patients you'll do just fine next is going to be the textbooks and i think this is a little bit different from other shelves because there's a lot more resources i think there's a lot more good resources and they're good for different reasons. Um, in the past, we talked a lot about case files. Uh, we also talked about blueprints for, for other shelves. I think this one's a little bit different where probably the best one is going to be one that you've never heard of, or maybe you have. It's called Pistana Surgery Notes, and they don't make anything else besides... Uh, 
it's the surgery shelf. And this was designed by some previous surgeon that was writing these notes for med students or interns. I'm not entirely sure what, but he was a prior surgeon and extremely great notes and taught a lot of classes um, at a university. So he really goes through the high yield details and he goes through every single subsection, whether it be trauma or whether it be cardiothoracic or GI or whatever it is, even talks about different pre-op management, the different post-op complications, things like that. He really goes through it in a very simple and easy to digest uh, manner. I think it's only about 200 pages and it's very large font. Um, you can go through it multiple times throughout your rotation. Something that you can fit in your back pocket that you can just read it on the go a little bit here and there. And it's something that you want to go through a couple of times because this will give you the most high yield information. It's going to be the, if you can only read one book, it's going to be this book. This is the book that you need to read that I think everybody has to read. Whereas the other ones, you don't necessarily need a textbook uh, for the other shelves as well as the other textbooks that I have listed here. Pastan is the only one that you have to read. For surgery, it's the only book that you have to read for the surgery shelf um, and also for shelves in general. Next one's going to be Case Files. I think this is a good book because it walks through different cases, different high yield cases um, for common surgical problem. So what I use this book for was when I was going to go into a case, I read that particular case case in the case file book. So I would have this very general overview of what the case would entail, why they were even getting this procedure, and what type of complications may arise from this procedure post operative because those are the questions that they're going to ask you in the OR. So that was a good book where I didn't read the whole thing in its entirety. I just read for those specific content. I read the cases that I was going to go into for the night before. Surgical recall is very similar. Similar in the sense of it's something that you use just for pimping. It's something that you use right before you go into a case. So this is just a bunch of facts. I would say they're very similar to just flashcards where it's just a bunch of facts that surgeons love to test. So they break it down by case. So what you can do is you can, the night before, if you know what case you're going to go into, just read all of the 15, 20, 30 bullets that they have. They're kind of just like questions and short answers that really are just facts. It's just fact-based so that when a surgeon is, you're in an OR with one of the surgeons and they're just pimping you left and right, these are going to be the questions that they're going to ask. They're very common questions. If you know these, it will make you look a little bit better. And it's also a thing, if you wanted to, if you really had more time, I'm not only prepping the cases that you have, but also when you go on rounds, they're going to be pimping you there too. So if you're able to read up on all the different patients that are on the team, just if the only thing that you're going to do is just read surgical recall and to just get those facts, that would be very high yield uh, in regards to pimping. It's, I think it's a useless book if you're using it for anything besides that. I don't think it's a very useful book and everybody has their own opinion, but I don't think it's a very good book for studying for the shelf. I think it's a great book though, if you're just trying to get through pimping questions on rounds or in the OR, it's an excellent book for that. Um, saved myself a lot with this book. Other ones, like I mentioned before, Master the Board's First Aid for Step 2, those give you a broad overview. Since there's so many other better resources, this is going to be very low on my list of, of textbooks that you should utilize. Essentially it goes, you need to use UWorld, you need to do medicine for UWorld as well as surgery for UWorld world, then everything kind of comes behind. Piston is definitely the best book that you can use out of the textbooks. And then out of the other two, case files and surgical critical are much, much lower. And you can kind of choose which one will ever work for you the best. And you can use them very similarly, just prepping for cases, prepping for getting pimped. Next thing are going to be video lectures. And I talk about this in other videos as well. Online Meta is going to be a great resource. It breaks it down by general surgery, subspecialty surgeries, and trauma surgery. And so you can kind of walk through each of these video lectures, I think there may be somewhere around four hours for each of the different sections. So you can go through them pretty quickly. And they really just do the, the very common diseases, get a very broad overview. If you know quite a bit within surgery, they're not going to be the most helpful. But if you really don't know anything, you're just starting off, these are going to be very useful. So that's why they're great for giving you a broad overview, sketching medical and pycmonic, really just for pharmacology. The only aspect that you should use it for is pharmacology on the surgery shelf. And there's really not that much. And if you've never used it before, definitely don't use it. Don't start using it now. But if you have used it in the past, it's something that you can just brush up on. Next thing is going to be resources on the wards. 
One thing that I can say is extremely useful, it may sound crazy, but always have some type of knot tying on your scrubs. When you edge of the string of your scrubs, always have some type of knots that you're practicing. For some odd reason, it just shows surgeons that you care, that you're serious about it. I don't know why, but I've gotten so many comments on me practicing my knots on the edge of my scrubs. And in reality, these were just the scrubs that I had used and, and didn't have time to exchange them. So I was using the same knots that were there for the entire couple of days but they didn't know that. Um, they really value that for some odd reason. They really care. They think that you care about the rotation more if you do that. And it's a good way to just practice. It's a good way when you're just standing there, when you don't have much to do and you're waiting for the procedure that you just practice your knots. You'll get better when you're actually going into it. You're much more effective. And this is going to be the first skill that you're going to learn off. The other thing, pocket medicine, mentioned it many times before. Definitely use that in the medical notes. Good for, we, we created a, a bunch of different cards for anatomy, for anesthesia, and different surgical complications. So definitely very high yield for that. Kind of break down the top things that you're going to be referencing or re-referencing every time for different cases. This one I think is going to be the most important specifically for surgery because I think that for a lot of other ones, I've, I've only really talked about uh, up-to-date Hippocrates and Micromedics in other videos, which I think they're great for up-to-date just getting general pathology, getting different uh, diagnoses and approaches, workup, management, things like that. And Hippocrates Micromedics are great for having some type of pharmacology in regards to dosing and, and frequency for these different medications. But I think the one thing that's different about surgery that I think that you really need to use and utilize is some type of anatomy textbook, some type of actual surgical textbook. And it depends on what resources you given by your medical school. We were given access medicine, uh, which gave you access to many, many different textbooks. And the one that I found to be the most helpful was this textbook by Schwartz uh, called Principles of Surgery. And I thought it was a great book because it was the type of thing that I would, in the morning of, while I was waiting for the procedure to happen, sometimes if I really had time the night before, but really it was while I was waiting for the patient to be rolled back, I would open up this book on access medicine and I would look up the anatomy, I would look up all the different steps for the procedure, and I could have these very good pictorials, these good diagrams to really walk me through the case and walk me through the anatomy that we would touch that while I was reading it, then when I went through in the case, it was essentially mimicked that. It mirrored what the person was talking about in the textbook because this is a textbook that's written by surgeons up to date. All these other websites that you may utilize for reference for these different cases, they're often not written by surgeons. They're written by medicine doctors from a medical perspective rather than step by step, what am I going to do first? What layer am I going to go through? What anatomical structures am I going to hit? What, what do I have to look out for? What are different postoperative complications? What is the anatomy? That was why Schwartz was an excellent book. I don't think you have to use specifically this textbook, but I think you should utilize something. You should utilize something that's really designed for surgeons. And I think it just gives you a different perspective. And I think it's a great way to prepare for these cases, whether the night before or the morning of. This is a great way to really hone it on the anatomy because there's only so much anatomy that you can keep in your brain. You can't memorize everything. You can't memorize the entire body. Um, you'll have to do that later if you go into surgical residency. But I think just for, as a medical student, since you're seeing so many new procedures, so many new cases, you just need to know what's important and how you're going to know what's important. This is a great book for doing that. You can use whatever book you have and you don't have to specifically use access medicine. You can actually use a, a physical textbook if you don't have access to access medicine. Then the last thing is this Emma Holiday review course. She makes ones for other specialties as well. I believe it's psychiatry and and medicine, if I recall correctly. So definitely check those out. Those are right before you actually take the shelf. Great resource. And that's pretty much it. The surgical shelf as well as the rotation, there's a lot more resources that you can utilize. And I think it's a little bit more like step one where there's a lot of resources and you have to kind of pick the ones that are going to work for you and pick the ones that are going to be most beneficial based off of kind of what I've described of what are you looking for. And I think these are great resources that you can kind of touch on and, and hopefully they help. If you have any other resources or any other um, things that you have heard of or that you've utilized, definitely uh, let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.